of perfect squares. Okay, the difference of perfect squares, so you can't see what I'm doing. Here we go. Uh, number 37, okay, number 37 on your cheek. The difference of perfect squares is a special case because it looks so much different from any of the other factors we've been doing. The majority of the problems on this worksheet so far have been trinomials. They've had three terms, okay, separated by positives and negatives. The difference of perfect squares only has two terms. Now, we had a few of those on the paper that they just had a GCF, but this is this has a little bit more than just two terms. There must be a minus sign in between them, okay? And these two numbers have to be perfect squares. Now, I have a list of perfect squares right here. Now, these aren't the only perfect squares. Obviously, we can keep going. 13 squared, 14 squared, 15 squared, so forth and so on. But for the most part, it usually doesn't go much beyond 12 squared when we're talking about that. So 36 is on our list. It's 6 squared. 49 is on our list. It's 7 squared. So if you were to remember, you should have done this before, but if you don't remember, let me remind you. We still end up with two sets of parentheses. Okay, we still end up with two sets of parentheses. The first number, 36, is 6 squared, so we put 6 in both sets of parentheses first. 49v squared, 7 squared is 49, and v squared is v squared. Okay, so we put 7v in the other spot. Automatically, every time one of them gets a plus, one of them gets a minus, and it's in factored form. Okay, that is the answer. Uh, let me show you how it works out because it looks like we just made a more complicated problem, right? It just got bigger. It was two terms and now it got bigger, uh, but it works out because 6 times 6 is 36. The outside gives us negative 42v, 6 times negative 7. The inside gives us positive 42v, and the last gives us negative 49v squared. So if we didn't have those opposite signs, if we didn't have a plus and a minus, then those terms right there in the middle would not cancel out. So that's why one of them's a plus and one of them's a minus. And then that also makes that last term a negative. Okay? So... Two terms, minus sign in between, you're looking for perfect squares. Let's also look at problem number 43. Okay, problem number 43 is 162 r squared minus 8. We've got two, two terms. We have a minus sign in between them, but 162 and 8 are not on my list of perfect squares. They're not up there. So what do we always look for first? GCF. They are both divisible by 2. If we divide them by 2, we get 81 r squared minus 4. 81 and 4 are perfect squares. Okay, 81 and 4 are perfect squares. So we can set up our two sets of parentheses. 9 squared is 81. And that term had the variable, so it gets an R. 2 squared is 4 plus minus. We are finished. Okay. Now, I purposefully picked these two examples. Okay, Let's look back at number 37 really quickly. A lot of people don't like that the variable comes second. We're used to the variable being in the first term. It's okay, just believe it the way that it is. Don't try and reverse the order because you're going to mess up the signs. Okay? Do not try and reverse the order because you're going to mess up the signs. Just keep it in order and your variable can be set. It's fine. Okay? It's, not gonna, it's not against the rules of math. Um, we're just used to the variable like in 43 coming first. But just keep it in order and you'll have the right answer. Okay?